Hey YouTubers, Muskrat Jim here. And today we're out to the reservoir. And we're going to be doing an overnighter and get, try to get some fishing done this evening and tomorrow morning. Hopefully we'll be a little more lucky than we were last time. Um, I have some maps in my pack, so let me take them out and show you where we're going. Okay, so here we have the Chatham Reservoir uh, using Google Satellite View. And we're coming in from this direction right here along this power line. Once we get to about this point, I'm going to go around this marshy area here and then up across the power lines again and into this section here. Now, the water is actually deeper along the edge here than it was where I fished last time, which was on the other side. And I've never been to this section before, so I'm hoping there's a place that'll have a, a large enough clearing that I can pitch my tent. So we'll follow this path. You can probably see the power lines above me. I'm not sure if you can. I can't see them in the camera. The sun is bright. But anyway, we'll make our way to the reservoir, make our detour around the bottom of it, and then navigate our way in through the middle. So, let's go. Well, I think I'm going to collect some of these blueberries to add to my breakfast tomorrow. These are bunch berries and they're edible. They have a tiny little seed in the middle that you can swallow. And um, the fruit doesn't really have that much of a flavor, but it's nourishing, I'm sure. I'm not really sure, but I think this might be honeysuckle. Most of the berries aren't ripe yet, but you can see some of them are turning blue. This is chamomile. See how tiny those flowers are? Those daisy-like flowers. The tea is made out of their leaves and flowers. And this is mint. The leaves grow in fours around the stem. And the flowers grow in the leaf axles. Now I smelled this plant before I even saw it because of the strong minty smell. And if you take one of the leaves and crush it between your fingers and then you smell it, there's an unmistakable scent of mint and you can eat those. Okay, so I have to cross this weathered old beaver dam to get to the other side. Squirrel has been here eating this pine cone. This is a well used animal run, which runs right down to that pond. Animals will come through here regularly, probably twice a day, 
to drink out of that water. Well, that's the direction I came from. And now I'm here. I don't usually see trees this big. Now the challenge is going to be to try to find some shoreline to be able to fish from. Well, it's been a fairly strenuous afternoon getting out here. It's time to take a break, sit down and have a cool drink. warm day today. It's in the um, mid to high 20s, which would be 70, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperature tonight is supposed to go down to about 8 degrees Celsius, which I'm not really sure what that is in Fahrenheit anymore. probably somewhere in the 50s. Oh, I know. I think I have a scale on my um, sleeping bag stuff sack. I'll just check it out. Yeah, okay. Let's see, six degrees Celsius is 42 degrees Fahrenheit. So it would be in the high 40s. So 8 degrees would be in the high 40s. And I'm sure I'll be warm enough with this summer weight sleeping bag. Now looking at the maps again, when we were coming along the power lines and we reached the reservoir at this point, kind of walked through this way and made our way through this, across that beaver dam, and then climbed up this hill to this point and then walked along and then cut in through this way. Like this looks like it's pretty well clear cut but it's about six foot high now. It's about two meters high. We are right in there in this area right here. What I want to do is actually work my way over to this section here. Seems like something's jumping. Jumping at the flies. Oh, another one. I 
I think I'm going to throw a line in here and just see.
Well, I'm on the other side now. That's where I was fishing my last video. There's a deer hoof print. And then that one's another one, but the, uh, the print is kind of distorted. Well, I'm going to find a place to set my tent, and then we'll have something to eat. It's getting close to 6 o'clock now. Let's go find a half-decent spot to put you... <laughs> Let's go find a half-decent spot to pitch a tent. I think I'll put it right in here. It's close to the water. And if any deer come down for a drink, I may just get lucky. Well, that's the spot. It's looking out over the water. In that direction. The sun's kind of low in the sky right now, so right there. So it's hard to shoot in that direction. But anyway, I'm going to boil some water and have myself something to eat. So on the menu tonight is a can of Kippard Snacks, a package of Mr. Noodles, a granola bar and a cheese and crackers, possibly some fruit and nuts, and a cup of coffee. Okay, so the place that I ended up camping is right there. Because from this point, I can look straight across the edge of that and into that corner. So that's where I am right now. Now, later on, I'm thinking about going fishing right over in there. Well, today's hike was quite a bit more strenuous than I thought it was going to be. Probably because of the weight of my pack. I didn't weigh it before I took off, but anyway, um, I only had two liters of water. So it wasn't like I was carrying a lot of water. Um, I brought my water filter so I'll be able to drink more water from the, the uh, reservoir. Yeah, earlier this afternoon when I was trying to fish, it was um, it was really neat watching the fish jump up for flies. You know, they were breaking the surface and stuff. I don't know if I caught any of that on film um, because I was looking into the sun and anyway, it was kind of hard to, to see the viewfinder. Uh, but anyway, the fish were definitely eating flies. Now, unfortunately, all I had were lures. So, um, they weren't eating what I was offering, <laughs> put it that way. Um, now, had I had waders and been able to get out from the shoreline a little bit in a fly rod, I might have had more luck. Um, I've never tried fly fishing, but, you know, there's a knack to it for sure, I'm, I'm sure. Um, I think my stove just went out. No, the, the um, heat wasn't turned up really high, so it wasn't making a whole lot of noise. But it's still, uh, it's still going there. Anyway, it's only like, I don't know, 7, 7 o'clock, I guess. And, um, yeah, I'm really quite tired. <laughs> I think it'll be an early, early bedtime for me tonight. Oh, I think the water's starting to boil.
I can still hear the fish jumping every once in a while. Or maybe it's just the ducks taking off or landing in the water. But anyway, it's a little bit of a splash every once in a while. I was going to say it's nice and peaceful out here. Um, however, every once in a while you'll hear um, an all-terrain vehicle and some kids on it on the other side. And um, if I would have tried to camp over there, I wouldn't have gotten any peace at all. This spot here, because it's sort of cut off from the main area, I've got some solitude here. And I think my tent blends in with the surroundings pretty good. Like no one's actually yelled out, hey, you know, or anything like that to me yet. Well, I'm going to enjoy this coffee while those noodles get a little softer. It's been a long day. A little hot. I'll have to add some more cold water to that. Anyway, I'm going to eat my meal and uh, have a bit of a rest and then just before it gets dark I'm going to try to fish a little bit more. So I'll talk to you then. Since I only brought two liters of water with me, I'm definitely going to be needing more water for drinking and cooking. So I'm going to hook up my water filter in a gravity feed method. I brought this bottle with me because I need the screw cap, just a standard screw cap, to fit on my water filter. And I've already collected almost a quart or almost a liter of water here. So what I'm going to do is put my water filter on this, flip it upside down, and let it drain into my kettle. Water filter. First thing I got to do is take this bike valve off like that. And the hose goes in there. And then this screws on top of the water bottle. Nice and snug so it won't drip. And then I have to connect this to a tree with a rope or a bungee cord so that it's inverted in gravity. will. Um, cause the water to flow out of the filter into a receiving container. So there's the bottle attached to the tree, the filter, and the hose into the container. Now if I don't want to wait for gravity to do all the work, I can just squeeze the bottle and it'll force it out the filter. Well I've changed into my sleeping clothes, made myself another cup of coffee, and I think I'm going to call it a night. See you guys in the morning.